and Lance Lynn is joining us. Lance, what's going on? How's the WBC treating you? Hey guys, thanks for having. Me. Oh, we're having a heck of a time. That's for sure. I'm looking forward to tomorrow night. Are there Dude. kids in the clubhouse? We were just talking about it. Is everyone bringing their kids to this thing? <laughs> uh, they're, they're, we have them. They're all over the uh, hotel and all that. But uh, clubhouse wise, I mean, they got us pretty locked down in there. So uh, no, no kids in the clubhouse at the, at this point. But they're with us uh, everywhere we go here. So Lance, I, I mean, great job the other night, Saturday night. I was there. Jonesy was there. Uh, but my question is, first of all, only four innings. You have, you are now officially old man status because I mean. The old Lance Lynn would have fought for at least a fifth, if not a sixth inning. And second of all, dude, you threw so many sliders and curveballs now. What is happening? It used to be like 91% heater. Here we go. So you're an old man now. Congratulations. Welcome to the old man club. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I can play tall 40, so I'm, I'm inventing new things. Uh, makes it fun, that's for sure. Uh, but, yeah, when they told me I was done after four, uh, I did think they were joking at first, and then, uh, but you know, we're in a we're in a winter winter go home mode, so you understand it, especially with our bullpen, knowing that they're full full go, everybody's ready to rock. So um, I understand it. You don't like it, but uh, yeah, man, it was a fun atmosphere. I'll tell you that. Was it your crowd, fist pump? Really was it. it your fist pump after the fourth inning when you struck him out and you gave the fist pump crotch grab? Yeah, go at the dugout. Was that what got you out of the game? I think so. I think that uh, maybe Dero and, and Andy thought that I, that might have been it. That might have been my last go at it. Uh, <laughs> got everything out right there. I was like, no, nah, that's usually when I get going. That's what that means. It's, it's time to ride. What's up, Lance? How you doing? Adam here. Um, obviously, hell of a performance. I mean, love love your career. Love the enthusiasm. Obviously, you pitch with, you pitch with energy. You pitch with emotion. How is it? pitching in this environment you know because that's the whole biggest thing right now is everybody saying this is exhibition and uh, the passion that there was no exhibition game the other night that was not how has it been like that just just amping your you got to amp yourself up even more for this tournament oh yeah definitely um dude, everyone's like hey what's this feel like and all that i go it's everything that i could imagine playing in uh, as a kid you know, all coming into one thing um you know you have world series that have this type of atmosphere but there's no like this is the feeling of both sides being cheered for throughout the game, booed and all that. Like there's difference. Usually when you're in a World Series game or something like that, it's just the the whatever teams at home is usually, you know, you know, they they rule the crowd. Right here there's both sides. So um, you know, I'm looking at it as a as a as a giant overgrown thirty five year old kid doing this right now and I, I'm having a blast. Everyone's like, oh, I have the energy. I was like, well, I pitched with that during the season, but it comes out a little bit easier and a little bit quicker here, and there's nothing like it for sure. Hell yeah. Lance, Lance, are you are you underrated? Are you an underrated pitcher? Are you an underrated pitcher? Like, in your mind, do you feel like dudes underrate? Like, do you think everybody underrates you? Like, Cy Young, three, three of the last four years – in the American League, you've been a top six Cy Young. You were sixth, fifth, and third. And the only person that was ahead of you was Garrett Cole. And yet, they're only giving you a two-year deal. Like, are you underrated? I mean, the fact that you're asking me a question, you know I am. So, uh, well, I know you're not. <laughs> yeah. I know you're no, not. I think, I think I'm one of those guys that, you know, people that, that have played the game, people that are around the game, uh, they, know, they know what I'm about. Um, sometimes, you know, that's how it happens. You're, you're the guy that, uh, you know, might not get the, the publicity or whatever that might be, but that's not who I am either. I'm going to show up every day. I'm going to do everything I can to help my team win. And that's how I've been my whole career. Um, you know, some people don't like the way that I, I go about, uh, competing, but you know, my teammates, I take care. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Got that bad internet. Yeah. yeah. Hotel. Is he back? You got me? Still got I think it. we got you again. Hold on. We lost you for a sec. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Are you Both, like the Yankees? Wi-Fi. You don't pay for the Wi-Fi? You don't pay <laughs> like the Yankees? They make you pay for the Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi? Get it. Hotel Wi-Fi. We got too many people in this play. Uh, I'll say, listen, Judge, I played with Lance for half a season. That's my boy. Yeah. Like, him and I, man, we, had, we drank a lot of beer together. We hung out. We talked a lot of shop. And that was one of my, like, I wouldn't go for a month. And they're like, well, you're going to catch Lance Lynn. He only throws one pitch, so go get him. He went out and yeah. dealt against Cueto in Cincinnati. So, like, don't, don't underestimate. Like, he's not underrated in my book, Kratz. He might be in yours, but trust me, if, you, <laughs> if I got a guy that's got to go out and win a game, I'm taking Lance Lynn and, 
a lot of the time over a lot of other guys. That's what I mean. That's what I'm saying. Like, this dude, you, like, people don't like the way you go about what you do. Like, what are you talking Like, you go out and win. The name of the game is win. Like, you give guys innings. You win. You Like, you stay in until you can get that W. Like, to me, like, I want to know why you think why, – why, why are people underrating you? Because, no, AJ, I'm not thinking that. This dude is an absolute horse on the other side of the ball. I think I got one knock against him, but it was a lucky, lucky knock. <laughs> a little shooter to right, maybe. What do you think? About oh yeah, a little cutter. You you were going too many cutters. Yachty would always call I cutters know. when you were th- when you, when I was hitting. So right that was easy. <laughs> no, I think it's part of it. You know, when you come up, uh, I came up in St. Louis, right? We had Carpenter, Wainwright, Los, Westbrook. Um, like I was the forgotten about kid coming up. And then when it was time for it to be my time, then it was walk, uh, Carlos Martinez. You, people get, you know how it is. Sometimes you just get passed over uh, in a certain city and then they don't think whatever. And then I left St. Louis and then here I am now. So, um, you know, I've had a great career. So I can't be mad about anything. And it, it's still going. And I'm having a hell of a time doing it. But sometimes that just happens in this game. And, uh, you know, you just got to keep going going down your path. And, uh you know, all you can do is, is be you. And I've been doing that. And then, you know, back into my career, maybe I, I'm getting more more love than I did early on. But, you know, whatever. I've had a heck of a time doing it. That's for sure. I want to know, um, obviously, you've been in all-star games, being around just the top talent for, you know, 48 hours. All-star games are really quick. You guys are together for three weeks. Um, I remember just being around Goldschmidt, being around Arenado, being around Jimmy Rollins, being around all these other great players, all-stars, and watching their work ethics and seeing, because again, it's still spring training. We still got to get our work in. Has there been anybody that's like, you've been around and like, I know this guy's good, but he works his ass off. And I just, because I, I got to see Goldschmidt, who's one of the hardest working guys in the game. And I just watched him like diligently work. Has there been somebody that just stood out to you? just like, man, that's why this guy is good. Uh, you know, like you said, you, you see their daily routines and things like that, and you know they're good, and you were like, okay, and then you see them go through it daily, how they're going to prepare for games, how they're going to prepare for whatever they have to do that day. Um, you know, like you said, Goldsmith and Arenado both have a, a daily set routine, uh, how they're going to do everything, and everybody does. Um, as you know, the older you get in this game, you got to do a little bit more each day <laughs> to get ready, um, mm-hmm. but just watching everybody kind of go about their business is, is awesome, and you know, you go all star games, and and you don't really get a chance to uh, truly get to know people because forty eight hours you're in and out. Um, being in clubhouses, uh, you know, every day, being on buses and things like that, you really get to know people. Um, I think it's been fun for that aspect, and I think a lot of guys get to know me too. Uh, you play against me, you're like, man, that guy's a dickhead, and, <laughs> and then you, we have fun in the clubhouse, and we're doing we're doing all of our stuff right here, and everyone's like, man. You are not like I thought you'd be, and so I think that's the main part. It's like you get to do the, the human part of things instead of just the, the competitor that you play against on through the other side. You see the human human piece, um, so that's been awesome. Lance, is, are you still Wayno's little brother? Like, does he still tell you to do everything? Like how you? Because like in St. Louis, he used to be like, "No, Lance, you can't do that, Lance." Like, is he is he grow? Is he let you like you know kind of spread your wings a little bit more? I told him when we got here, I go, we're not in St. Louis anymore. You're in my world, old man. So Yes, uh, I love it. Yes. And I'm sure he looked at you and just started laughing. <laughs> we had we've we've had to be honest, man, we've had a great time. Uh he was telling uh Miles, he's like, Miles, this this guy, when he come up, he would do everything he could to make sure he got under my skin. And I was like, Yeah, I'm still doing it too. And we're but we've had a great time. Um, you know, kind of, you know, just getting back together. But uh you know, Wainwright was always good to me. He took care of me growing up, but he also, uh, you know, he made sure that I, I didn't go too crazy. Um, and that was uh, – it helped me it helped me hone it in. But And then I was like, now, I, once I hit 30 and I got out of St. Louis, I was like, now, you, you had it, he had me build up so much and kept inside so much. Now I'm yelling at everybody. And he started laughing. Tell us about the uh, phone call to D-Row and how you got him to the team. <laughs> I'm hearing there's a little, like, let, let's go through the whole – let's two hours before the phone call. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, so we're, we're at hunting camp um i'm with all, like my high school buddies uh, uh my brother-in-laws and my father-in-law and they're like hey you gonna play in this or not and i'm like you know we already had you know some steaks on the uh on the traeger grill we're drinking some bourbon by the uh in the campfire and they're like uh what's the deal and i was like well let's call d row and see what's up 
And they're like, you won't do it. You know, you know how guys do once you get around and all that. I was like, all right. So I FaceTimed Vero. I'm going to tell you it was probably 11, 1130, 12 o'clock his time. So I'm FaceTime. He answers the phone. He's like, who is this? And I was like, hey, I go, it's me. Uh, I dropped a, a, I dropped a, another couple words on him. And then he goes, what is going on? I go, I'm in. And he goes, what? And I go, I'm playing. I go, you can't tell me no. And then that's kind of how it went down. He's like, oh, my goodness. Uh, so we had, a, we had a good FaceTime at 11 o'clock at night after some drinks uh, by a campfire. And all my buddies were like, it looks like you're in. So that's kind of how it went down. d was like, you're, you're definitely in. Um, make a phone call. And, and next thing you know, he's like, yeah, you got it. That's awesome. I want to ask about the, the, the reaction to Turner's home run. Obviously, I mean, iconic home run. But the bench, this was the, the, I think that was the pinnacle of American emotion. Uh, Jerry Manuel, first one out there. <laughs> bench, first one out there. Do you know what I mean? Uh, d Row didn't want to go out. I was telling him, he said, I didn't want to go all the way out there because I'm a, I'm a coach, but like I had to be out there. Like, where were you at doing all this? I mean, were you inside? Did you come back out? Like, yeah, I was back in the dugout. Uh, I was screaming. Uh, you know, the inning before, uh, you know, the guy got out of a big situation, uh, questionable borderline call, whatever, but. You know, we were on high, you know, everybody's jack. Um, and then when he was able to hit that homer, it was just everything that you had built up just kind of let go. So everybody's screaming, everybody's jumping over the fence, everybody, everybody's yelling at the, you know, the other side. Uh, that's just kind of how, how it goes in these games. Um, you saw when they hit home runs and stuff like that, they, they had some uh, some dancing and some things going on. And I think as the game went on, our side was definitely paying attention to everything that, that was happening. And then uh, everything kind of turned right back around on them. And, uh, you know, had a little uh, had a little fun with it, that's for sure. Um, but stuff you can't do during the regular season, you can do here. And, uh, and, you know, everybody's having a hell of a time doing it, that's for sure. And it's no disrespect. It's just passion. I know his big ass didn't jump over the fence, Lance. I know that. <laughs> he would have fallen down. He would have got stuck. It no, yeah. So I think McCann got stuck going over, and I saw that, and I saw I stood on the bench and did the step over instead of a, the leg coming over. Uh, so, but, but yeah, right when he hit it, everybody took off, and I was like, man, I'm I'm gonna knock somebody over or I'm gonna fall myself. So I I, st- I stood up on the bench so I could just once everybody's out of my way, I could I could get over it and not hurt anybody. Yeah, there should be a stack cast of the vertical leap of everyone <laughs> after a big celebration and see how everyone's doing. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, Chris, so you, you got a camera on that dugout where guys <laughs> Agreed. Get it up. We need one of those. Fox, hook it up. So, Lance, you're playing with Trout, among others, and Trout's stand up dude. He was one of the kind of leaders of getting the recruiting going, especially for the position player side. Has anyone given him shit like, yo, this is what uh playoff vibe is like he's only played i mean he's the best player in the game for like a decade he's only played one time they got swept by the royals in five minutes in 2014 like best player on on the biggest stage he looks like a guy that hasn't been in the playoffs before uh you know and it's crazy to think about man uh playing against him for this long seeing everything he's accomplished in the game that he's only you know had one one crack at it uh you know it's kind of a shame uh not being able to see him uh with everything he's about uh in October, but yeah, there's a lot of like, you know, there's been some things that like guys that have never been in the playoffs are like, everyone's like, hey, this is what playoffs are all about. Um, you know, obviously you're going to have some jabs and stuff like that, but uh, when you're talking about a future Hall of Famer and stuff like that, you try to stay away from jabs because you, you know you're going to you're going to have a battle with him during the year and something like that. You don't want to give him any extra. That's for sure. Yeah, you, don't give the, you do not want to give the good ones any extra because that's usually when it comes back to bite you later on. Hey, Lance, you're, I'm assuming because you threw the other night, you're done, right? With the WBC, you're done. Yeah, you're yeah. Done I, I asked well, the, we, I, can't I asked the White Sox if I could close or something like that uh, tomorrow, and they were like, "Absolutely not." So, no, 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 no. <laughs> so, so that's what I want to get to the White Sox. Let's let's get we're, now that you're done with the WBC. Let's get to let's get to to the White Sox, right? Uh, your opening day? Are you pitching opening day? No, I think it's going to be Cease. My man earned it last year. He's oh, second yeah. in the Cy Young okay. and things like that. So uh, that's the way I see it. Whoever wins or whoever's highest in the Cy Young the year before automatically gets it, uh, even if the manager has a different opinion. That's what uh, that's my, that's been my thing since St. Louis. Wainwright always said, whoever whoever finishes higher in the Cy Young, that's who gets the opening day. And right, Cease I like definitely it. deserves it. I like it. I and I agree. But so here's my here's my question. What are things? Obviously, you know me. We see each other in Chicago. I'm a White Sox guy. What 
What uh, what is different this year with Pedro Grifol as opposed to Tony La Russa? Why is a White Sox fan should I have hope that things are going to be different, especially after watching Moncada go down again last night with a concussion and and bruised ribs? Like what what's t- sell me hope on the White Sox for all my White Sox people? Well, you don't like seeing that because uh, Yo Yo is one of our guys. Um, we need him to be healthy, and we need him to be the player that he's. Been. But you look at the big thing and the number one thing. You look at our team health uh, right now. Um, we're healthy. Um, guys that are are ready to go and, and doing those things, um, and that's that's pretty much it. Uh, the year before, when most of the guys are healthy all year and stuff like that, we win 90, 90 plus games. Uh, last year, no health. Um, and, and no depth, we won 81 games. So when you're looking at a really bad year, uh, really bad luck health-wise and things like that, and you still win 81 games, it gives you the hope you need for this year. Um, so we added some depth pieces. Uh, Rick in the front office added guys that are going to help us, um, you know, uh, as bench guys and stuff like that. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, when it's all said and done, you got to stay healthy and you got to win games. Um, we're starting to, uh, well, unfortunately, some guys have left for the WBC, but we were coming together as a team pretty good. Um, we're going to have a, a week plus when we get back to, you know, kind of, you know, make sure we're ready to go and do some things. But I think the WBC helped guys too. Um, you look at uh, Ruiz for Venezuela, it was absolutely lights out in the WBC. That was huge for him. And that gives us another piece in the bullpen that's going to be enormous, especially since we don't know when Liam's going to get back. So, We've got the talent um, right now. We got the help, and if we can figure out how to uh, make sure we come together as a team uh, with the talent and health that we have, we got a chance to be really good. Who won in golf today? Tell me, like, what? Give me a rundown of what happened. Oh man, we woke up this morning and it was pouring. It was typical South Beach where it was raining everywhere. We did, we decided not to go, um, and then. Uh, but I will say that most likely Graveman and I would have had a, had a good. A good match. We're both, uh, you know, we're both pretty, pretty close in the same handicap of, a, of, a, of an eight. So it's usually you know, got me the last two times. And I'm looking forward to the race, so I can take some of my money back. Yeah. <laughs> so, so before we let you go, Lance, uh, you're, we talked about White Sox. Uh, Liam Hendricks, do you have any update? Have you talked to him? Uh, obviously, wishing him to get back after his cancer diagnosis. Yeah. Um, the last time I saw Liam, like. To be honest, he was like, I, this is going way better than I thought. And I was like, he, he looks ready. He's been throwing. Um, we're waiting for, I want to tell you that he's got one more test coming up that tells us exactly what we want to know the 1st of April or the end of uh, this month. So that will tell us a lot going forward. But, you know, Liam, Liam's like, oh, once once they get me to go, I'll be back in games and, and the next day. And I was like, Liam, calm down. <laughs> everything <laughs> like take give yourself a break i'm like get yourself right and we, we need you you know when you're ready he goes oh, i'll be ready right when they give me the go and i was like well typically in fashion i i hear you but make sure you're good to go but he's throwing uh he's been throwing bullpens when he when he feels good so hopefully that means they you know everything is cleared up and he's you know ready to go and um, i mean you hope to get him back by by june if everything's uh perfect in his mind he'll be back in may i was like but we'll see but he's he's looks good. He's you know he looks you know he looks strong. So that's the that's the number one thing. And when you see a guy like that going through it, and he's got good spirits and he looks strong. So that's a you know that's a good good sight to see when he comes in the clubhouse. That's a great update. Awesome. That's a great update. It's a blessing, that's awesome. Man. Yeah, it is. Hey, Lance, good luck in that damn championship game tomorrow. You're gonna be watching this game tonight in Mexico, Japan. Who you got? Yeah, I gotta figure out. I'm gonna find a find a place to watch it and uh, you know see what we've got going on tomorrow. But uh, you know, it should be a fun game to watch. And then whatever team comes out of it, it's gonna be a hell of a game tomorrow night. Who do you want? Sure. Who do you want? Let's Who go. Do you want to face? You want Mexico? Who do or I you want? want Japan? I mean, I'm not gonna. I, you, you know what? You, no, you, you can't can go say wrong it. Either one. I I would like to get another shot at Mexico, to be honest okay. with you. But I'd also like. Get a shot at. I think is is you supposedly set up to throw the championship game? No, he's no not Yamamoto. Him in a hot, no Yamamoto, but no. Otani might close out the game. Angels are letting him close things out, apparently. Well, yeah. if he's get, if he's if he's slated to be able to close, then I'm I'm gonna have to get on a phone with Rick today and see if I can. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know how that goes. Yes, yeah. let me know how that call goes. Hey, yeah. Rick. Uh, yep. Probably. Hang it, up. I, I know exactly how to go. He's. Oh. It's gonna go just like, like that. Just like that. Wait, we got watch me? it for a yeah. sec, Lance. How's it gonna go? 
How's this call going to go with Rick on when it's you call gonna him? Go, I want to close. Uh, see ya. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah okay. we got you back, Lance. Uh oh. Uh, I don't think we hear him. Oh, the damn internet. <laughs> Lance, <laughs> oh, Lance, can... you hear us? Uh oh. I can hear you a little bit. Right okay. Just, just uh, we appreciate the time, man. How's it going to go with Rick Hahn, though? He's going to hang up like you just hung up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs>